good day everyone welcome to Rizal's life works and writings and for this presentation we will talk about the life of Rizal in Paris to Berlin and his tour in Europe together with Dr. Maximo Viola upon finishing his studies in Madrid Rizal went to Paris and Germany to specialize in ophthalmology serve as an assistant to famous oculist in Europe continuing his travels and tours to observe European life and customs government and laws in Paris in Berlin he met and befriended several German top scientists like Dr. Fyodor Jagor, Adolf Mayer, Hans Mayer, and Dr. Rudolf Virchow. Terminated his studies at Central University of Madrid, Rizal, who was 24 at that time, went to Paris to continue and acquire more knowledge in ophthalmology. By the way, what is ophthalmology? Ophthalmology is the study and treatment concerning the disorders and disease of the eye. November 1885, Rizal lived in Paris and stayed four months and worked as an assistant of Dr. Louis de Weckert. Dr. Louis de Weckert is a leading French ophthalmologist which Rizal expanded his knowledge in the field. He also befriended this Filipino people, namely Pardo de Taveras, the two famous painters Juan Luna and Felix Restriction Hidalgo and Paz Pardo de Taveras, a pretty girl and was engaged to Juan Luna. On her album, Rizal drew a series of sketches on the story of The Monkey and the Turtle. Rizal spent many hours at the studio of Juan Luna. They have discussed various problems of art and improved his own painting technique. He also posed a model to several paintings of Luna. One of them was the death of Cleopatra. He posed as an Egyptian priest and the blood compact where he posed as Sicatuna with Trinidad Pardo de Taveras as Ligaspi. Rizal as a musician. He admitted that he had no natural aptitude for music. However, he had to because of his classmates been taking music lessons. He was a flutist in various impromptu reunions of Filipinos in Paris. He even composed some songs like Alin Mang Lahi and La Deportacion. In Heidelberg, February 3, 1886, Rizal arrived in Heidelberg, a historic city of Germany, famous for its old university and romantic surroundings. He worked at the University Eye Hospital under Dr. Otto Becker, a distinguished German ophthalmologist and Professor Wilhelm Kuhne, which he attended lectures. To the flowers of Heidelberg, the spring of 1886, Rizal was fascinated by the blooming flowers along the cool banks of Neckar River. He wrote a fine poem, Alas Flores de Heidelberg which means in English, to the flowers of Heidelberg. First letter to Blomin Treat, written on July 31, 1886, Rizal's first letter written in German to Professor Ferdinand Blomin Treat, director of Ateneo of Litmeritz, Austria. Blomin Treat was impressed and sent two books to Rizal as gift. This marked the beginning of their lifelong friendship. August 9, 1886, Rizal left the city and arrived in Leipzig on August 14, 1886. He attended several lectures at University of Leipzig on history and psychology. He also befriended Professor Friedrich Ratzel, a famous German historian, and Dr. Hans Mayer, a German anthropologist. October 29, 1886, Rizal left Leipzig for Dresden. He met Dr. Adolf B. Mayer, director of the Anthropological and Ethnological Museum. He stayed two days in the city. November 1, 1886, Rizal left Dresden by train and arrived by evening. Rizal was enchanted by Berlin's scientific atmosphere and absence of race prejudice. He met some great scientists like Dr. Fyodor Jagor a celebrated German scientist, traveler, and author of Travels in the Philippines, 
a book which Rizal read and admired. After that, Rizal worked in the clinic of Dr. Carl Ernest Switzker, a famous German ophthalmologist. He became a member of various societies as he recommended by the said doctors. Another doctor in line named Dr. Virchow recognized the talent of Rizal and called him as a genius. The following are some reasons why Rizal chose to live in Berlin. To gain knowledge of ophthalmology, to further his studies of sciences and languages, to observe the economic and political conditions of German nation, to associate with famous German scientists and scholars, and to publish the novel No Limit Tangere. Rizal on German Woman In his letter to his sister on March 11, 1886, he was impressed by the German womanhood. He described them as serious, diligent, educated, and friendly. And Rizal also added that German women are not gossipy, frivolous, and quarrelsome like Spanish women. They are not particular with beautiful dresses and expensive jewelry. However, still, they are dressed nicely. Rizal regretted women in the Philippines because many of them are more interested in how they dress than in how much they know. Rizal, however, praised the delicacy of feeling, the fine manners, devotion, and hospitality of women. Moreover, Rizal admired the German customs in general, the interesting self-introduction to strangers in a social gathering. According to German etiquette, it is bad manners for a guest to remain aloof. In this place, Rizal also suffered his darkest winter, mainly because he suffered poverty and no money arrived from Kalamba. He was flat broke, he only had one meal a day and caused him to become malnourished. Then he also feared that he might die from getting sick with tuberculosis. However, his brother Pashano tried desperately raise money for his brother Rizal. Following the release of Nole Metangere, Rizal planned a trip to Europe and Dr. Maximo Viola consented to accompany him. Juan Luna had forwarded Pashano's 1,000 pesos remittance from Paris to Rizal. Rizal promptly reimbursed Viola for the 300 pesos he kindly gave to allow Noli to be printed. Rizal and Viola, two brown-skinned doctors, left Berlin by rail on May 11, 1887. Rizal and Viola stayed in Dresden for a while. The first meeting with Blomin Treat the train carrying Rizal and Viola arrived at railroad station of Litmeritz, Bohemia at 1.30 p.m. on May 13, 1887. The station was Professor Blumentritt, who had received their wire. He was carrying a pencil sketch of Rizal that he had received in order to identify his Filipino friend. Rizal and Viola were cordially welcomed by him. Beautiful memories of Litmeritz. Rizal remembered his stay to Litmeritz with fondness. He appreciated the Blumentritt family's friendly hospitality. The professor's wife, named Rosa, was good cook, and she prepared special Austrian dishes which Rizal liked very much. His children were Dolores, Conrad, and Fritz. One afternoon, Rizal and Viola invited to a beer garden where the best beer of Bohemia was served. One of the men in the group was the Burgomaster. Rizal talked in fluent German, for which the Burgomaster were amazed. The Burgomaster asked Rizal how long it took him to learn German language, and our hero replied, Eleven months, sir. On their last night in Let Me Ritz, Rizal and Viola to reciprocate Blumen Treat's hospitality, tendered a farewell dinner in his honor at their hotel. Rizal and Viola left Let Me Reach by train at 9.45 a.m. on May. At Prague, 
Rizal and Viola traveled to Prague after Lettenritz. They brought Blomentritz's letter or recommendation to Professor Wilkow, who welcomed them and escorted them around the city historical sites. Their next stopover was the Nobian voyage to Linz. On May 24, Rizal and Viola left Vienna on a riverboat to see the beautiful sights of the Nobi River. From Linz to Rinfall, the river voyage ended in Linz. They traveled overland to Salzburg and from there to Munich, where they sojourned for a short time to savor the famous Munich beer, reputed to be the best in Germany. At Geneva, after sightseeing in Lausanne, Rizal and Viola left on a little boat, crossing the foggy Lehmann Lake to Geneva. Following the tour, while Rizal, accompanied by Dr. Viola, was happily touring Europe, an exposition of Philippines was held in Madrid. Upon reaching the Geneva, Switzerland, he received sad news from his friends in Madrid from the deplorable conditions of the primitive Igorots, or what we know, the Highlander in the Philippines, who exhibited in this exposition, some of whom died and whose scanty clothing, G-strings or bahag in Tagalog, crude weapons were objects of mockery and laughter by the Spanish people and the press. This scenario and actions coming from the Spaniards were clearly racial discrimination against Filipinos. From Geneva, Rizal and Viola went to Italy. On June 27, 1887, he reached Rome, the Eternal City, and also called the City of Caesars. On June 29, the Feast of St. Peter and St. Paul, Rizal visited for the first time the Vatican, the City of the Popes. He was deeply impressed, particularly St. Peter Church, the rare work of art, the vast St. Peter Square, the colorful papal guards, and the atmosphere of religious devotion. Rizal returned to his hotel, very tired, and wrote to Blomentritt, I am tired as a dog, but I will sleep as a god. Before we end up this presentation, I would like to drop a quote coming from Jose Rizal himself. He said that there can be no tyrants where there are no slaves. That's all. Thank you, everyone.